We all know the songs. This is the song, la 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 la. Robert Ducky, I'm awfully fond of. And the lovable characters. Uh, uh, hi, oh, this is a uh, Kermit the Frog. Oh, hi, Bert. But do we know how to get to Sesame Street? For over 40 years, this question has been puzzling young and old alike. Despite this, Sesame Street has explored the benefits of educational television, encountered social changes, and exchanged its values to develop foreign co-productions. Sesame Street's creation began with the help of Sarah, the three-year-old daughter of Lloyd Morissette, the Carnegie Foundation executive. She had a daily routine of watching the local test patterns. This unusual behavior intrigued Joan Gans Cooney. The two began thinking of ideas, each wondering how television, a popular source of entertainment, could be packaged with education. This was a risky undertaking, with shows such as Captain Kangaroo, Mr. Rogers, Bozo, and Romper Room dominating much of children's television during the 1960s. It was also also a crucial period in American history, the Civil Rights Era. As Osbar described, if we look at history in 1969, a lot of stuff was happening. The Vietnam War, the color TV, the man on the moon, and Sesame Street, a new world with incredible characters on public television. In 1967, President Lyndon B. Johnson signed the Public Broadcasting Act, implementing the Corporation for Public Broadcasting as a government-run organization. The federal government gave $9 million to this organization, the first of its kind in television history. Seeing the government take action, Morissette and Cooney formed the Children's Television Workshop, where they received major support in the form of $8 million. Cooney knew in order to make a children's show, she needed an amusing aspect as well, the endlessly creative mind of Jim Henson. Henson's Muppets, as he called them, brought the delicate balance between fun and learning. With his lovable characters such as Kermit the Frog, Big Bird, Cookie Monster, and Oscar the Grouch, Sesame Street was destined to be a hit. Sesame Street, you know like open sesame? It kind of gives the idea of a street where neat stuff happens. But I think what Sesame did that was very different was bringing together this fun entertainment and making that fun and having the learning be part of the entertainment so the kids weren't even thinking that they were learning something. To model the format on commercials using jingles and music and fast moving animation and so on to teach the alphabet and numbers, that was a really innovative idea. As Carrera described, it's the relationships between the characters that make our show special. We simply teach by modeling behaviors, going through challenges, and learning from our mistakes. On November 10th, 1969, the first episode of Sesame Street was aired on PBS. The show received reviews from parents across the nation, including one from President Nixon. The show did encounter criticism. Sesame Street really featured a diverse cast of characters from different you know racial backgrounds who are living and working together in this urban neighborhood and at that time this was a really bold and radical idea the show encountered backlash and was banned in mississippi for imposing radical ideas other countries took notice as well producers around the world began approaching cooney about creating their own productions in conjunction with sesame workshop ultimately evolving into co-productions in over 130 countries Many of those broadcasts are not simply imports of U.S. Sesame Street, but rather whole new series created in association with local educators. Joan Cooney, I think, was a little surprised when producers from other countries approached her and said that they really wanted a Sesame Street of their own. What evolved were co-productions of Sesame Street that have their own characters. Since Sesame Street was the first of its kind, Cooney had to explore the effects of educational television. Researchers were hired to explore the impact on viewers and continue to do so today. Studies have shown that American children who viewed Sesame Street achieved high school grade point averages at least 16% higher than others and were exhibiting pro-social behavior up to 40% more than non-viewers. The real innovation of Sesame Street was that it brought together education and entertainment. The real difference with Sesame was that before Sesame, there was really nothing for children that was done with 
such scientific rigor. So Sesame was always seen as an experiment and the content was tested with children to see if they love it, to see if they're learning from it. And it was that bringing together of the education piece and the entertainment and then adding a research component, I think that was really quite special. What I call the science, if you will, behind Sesame Street is really one of the most remarkable features. From start to almost finish, shows are carefully constructed and reviewed by both academic experts, by teachers, and by young children themselves to make sure that the content is on target and effective. Results in foreign co-productions are similar. In fact, Egyptian viewers do two times as well on gender equality measures than others. In Indonesia, we found that children who watch the local co-production Jalan Sasama were doing better on a range of skills relating to literacy, numeracy, and health knowledge. The proudest part of that impact is in the area of the world where kids are really lacking high quality educational experiences. So places like Bangladesh, where kids are seeing the show and, and they're learning information that they just don't get as easily. Sesame Street has evolved to meet the needs of children today, encountering social change along the way. Sesame Street has also encountered and tackled many tough topics such as 9-11 and death. Mr. Hooper died. He's dead. Yeah, well, I'll give it to him when he comes back. Mr. Hooper's not coming back. Today, Sesame Street is tackling the topics of obesity and STEM domestically. They discussed how sesame could be used as a medium to promote healthier habits. Cookie Monster now talks about cookies being a sometimes food. More recently, content is also focused on STEMs to respond to the need for better and stronger math and science learnings. Internationally, Muppets encounter and tackle health and hygiene, along with AIDS in South Africa. Can you tell everybody that it is okay to hug someone who is HIV positive like me? I sure do, Cammy. Another one of my favorite examples is Sesame Tree, which deliberately bridges the gap between Catholic and Protestant young people in Ireland. It really tries to cross that long-standing religious boundary. And I think that's not only a wonderful curriculum feature, it's essentially a human rights accomplishment of Sesame Workshop. Sesame Workshop has exchanged the American values with foreign countries. Partnering with global organizations such as the World Bank and UNICEF, co-productions are capable of targeting key areas needing improvement in different countries. As you can imagine, the needs of a child in Afghanistan looks very different from the needs of a child in Germany based on what resources they might have access to. So there are different kinds of content emphasis um, in different co-productions. In Afghanistan, we have a real focus on girls' education and girls' empowerment. In sub-Saharan Africa, we might have more of a focus on health. Just seeing kids' lives transform, even for a moment, where they would have the pleasure of seeing a Muppet on the screen that was speaking their own language and engaging them in a learning experience that was going to help them in their own context. And I think that's really what's wonderful about Sesame Street. As Osbar described, Sesame Street has impacted lots of kids around the world. I'm one growing up in Mexico City. Sesame impacted my life so much I left my home and family to be a part of it. I never imagined that one day I would be working for Henson. Although Sesame Street is 46 years old, it is still relevant with adults and children today. As Carrera described, whether you are a human or a puppet, we are 100% real and so kids believe in us. We witness it every time our characters go out in the real world. We can see it in their eyes and we can feel it in their hugs. That kind of human exchange impacts children. Animation can't do that. For many years, I think Sesame Street was the most popular program in households that had young children. And I think Sesame Street's still terrifically relevant. For one reason, it's still the most trusted source. And second, Sesame continues to evolve in terms of the curriculum. And another measure of Sesame's achievement, I think, is the affection that adults have for it. Sesame Street is able to bring parents and children together by their parody series, where popular television shows are performed by Muppets. Where would we be without Sesame Street? Each day, Sesame Street encourages its 156 million viewers to become smarter, kinder, and stronger by making a difference in the world. Yeah! <laughs>
Sesame Street has been brought to you today by the letter E.